Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, listen to me. You can sketch anything. Anything. And now that is not some just like cliche cheerleading attempt for me to get you really excited about something regardless of what I believe your result could be. No, friends. I mean this. Uh, I uh, uploaded a video a while back and it was based on one of the projects that I thought was actually inspired by Betty Edwards, drawing on the right side of the brain. And it wasn't, but anyway, I love Betty. I, I adore her. And she believes too, that anyone, regardless of skill and regardless of past experience and, and what is skill? Like really, I mean, that's a whole other video topic, but you can draw anything. And it all comes back to what? Basic shapes. You've heard it a million times over. Basic shapes. But something happens. You know, we've got our paper set up. We've got our, our pencil. We're ready to go. We're like, okay, circles, rectangles, teardrops. Got it, got it, got it, got it. And then that pencil hits the paper. And you're like, I have to get it right. And you forget all about the basic shapes. <laughs> um, but you should be excited because understanding this concept means that you can sketch anything and sketching is going to help you on your watercolor journey. Yes, you can sketch anything. So now before I, we get too far into this, uh, Let's, let's say some hellos. Hello, I'm so glad you're here, friends. This is day, what day is this? Day, day four. This is day four. Hey, where's my banner, man? Where's my banner? So people... <laughs> ma yes, ma'am, we're sorry. <laughs> um, that's my husband, Adam. He, actually, he's over here. Um, he's back today from his hiatus. <clears throat> Um, he's our AV tech crew. And then we've got Kelly on comments. Say hello, Kelly and Adam. They're awesome. And they kick butt. And I could not do this without them. And um, sorry. So hello. Who do we have here? We have Michelle. Hello from Texas, Virginia. I see you again. You've been here every day. Kelly saying hello to everyone. Oh my gosh. Jess Butterfly. It's 2 a.m. in Australia. I'm honored. Woohoo! So glad you're all here. So, and welcome to all of our viewers watching on the replay. I love at night, um, I go and I, I check out all the comments from the replay viewers and I, I love seeing them. So make sure you're commenting. We are here for you. I'm here for you. And I will be answering your questions, of course. <clears throat> so now if you are here watching on this, this is for later on. This is me like back to the future in my video. So is that right? But anyway, bear with me. If you're here on the replay, hit, get, get hit, whatever. I, I need to like coffee. Clearly I don't like coffee, but it, clearly I need coffee. Um, get into comments and say here on replay or replay or something like that. I don't, I don't want your coffee. No, coffee's gross. No. Yuck. <laughs> <coughs> he drinks coffee. Anyhow. So glad you're here, friends. We have Marina from Germany. Oh, we have we have a bunch of folks from Germany. Hello, Jackie uh, from the UK. Awesome. I, I'm just honored that you're here. It's so exciting to connect with you all in this way. Anyway, but let's get back to it. I have a question. I have a question for you, and I really do want you to respond. Um, do you think that sketching, drawing, illustrating is required, is necessary? to have a powerful, fulfilling, successful watercolor journey. Head in the comments and let me know. Truly, just go with your gut. I don't want you to try to answer with what you think I wanna hear. I want you to answer with what you believe. Yeah, Rita, I can't stand coffee. I, I drink Coke Zero. So let me know, what do you think? Do you think sketching is really important? Do you think sketching is required, important, necessary for you to be more successful? In your watercolor journey. Uh, Stephanie says sketching is not required at all. Um, wow, where did that comment go? So fast. But if it's your thing, it's very important. Love that. 
Uh, Glomar says, yes, Virginia not required, but I think it is super helpful. No, but it doesn't hurt from Tiffany. Okay, great. <clears throat> so I'm asked this question all the time. Like, do I have to learn how to sketch? And the thing is here, here's the thing. <clears throat> if you are creating creative roadblocks for yourself, because we don't like creative roadblocks in Christie land, in watercolor land. Um, if you are creating those creative roadblocks for yourself with the thinking that I have to figure out sketching, I have to feet, I have to be good at it, or else my watercolor is going to suck. I want you to get out of that thinking. That's what I want. I always say, follow your joy. And if your joy right now <clears throat> is just splash and paint on the paper, big bold flowers, or juicy, loosey goosey landscapes, then follow that joy. If you have a curiosity about sketching, I call so many of you watercolor curious. If you have a creative curiosity about sketching, like, gosh, I wonder if I could sketch an apple. Well, try it. Just try to sketch an apple. Don't dive deep into all the theory and the practice and the perfect way and watch a million videos before you sketch the apple. Just go sketch the daggone apple and then follow that knowledge. I said, did I say it yesterday that, um, what did I say? Y'all were talking about it in comments. Knowledge is, um, knowledge, uh, what did I say? It was so good. <laughs> I thought it was good. I said something like knowledge begets interest, right? Something like that. Somebody remind me of what I said because I feel like it was good and it makes sense here. A little bit of knowledge gives you momentum. Trying to absorb a lot of knowledge at one time more than likely is going to be overwhelming. So, but back to my point, sketching, I truly believe illustrating is not a requirement for your watercolor journey. Will it in uh, be insightful? Will it, knowledge begets interest. Thank you. Knowledge begets interest. Yes. So a little bit of knowledge can beget inspire a whole ton of interest so go slow baby steps if you have a curiosity about sketching follow it but if you don't don't stress out over it okay don't worry about it just keep painting all right so now today is about sketching for watercolor but we are going to paint too um yeah I have written down here, I'm looking off to the side. I have written down, tackle the scary stuff one step at a time. We talked about that a little bit yesterday with color theory and composition. I talked about the double whammy of those two things. Um, <clears throat> and a way to approach anything in life, but you know, we're here talking about art, is to tackle the scary stuff in teeny tiny increments, tiny steps. I always say, the first step isn't the hardest if it's small enough. I always say that. I like to go against the grain, you know. The first step is the hardest. No, not if it's small enough. Not if it's small enough. And the first step builds a little momentum. And then you take that momentum and you build and you build and you build. Uh, so, yeah. All right. So, you won't believe how we're going to start today. I have something to show you. And we're gonna start sketching. We're gonna, I mean, we're gonna dive right in. So we're gonna head on down to the painting table and I'm gonna show you something and you're gonna be like, girl, what you doing? <laughs> All right. So my son, <coughs> how's everybody doing? How is everyone? I wanna see what these, what y'all are saying here. I gotta get caught up with comments. Yes, Virginia, do it scared. I started yesterday. First words I said were, do it scared. We're going to do it scared today. And, we, and we're going to do it scared today, too. All right. Uh, my son, Isaac, we call him Izzy. He's been on camera a few times. Some of you have seen him. He's been in videos. And he wanted to learn how to draw. And, and of course, he's already lost interest in it. So I picked up this book. I had a few minutes. And I was like, well, this looks cute. And I literally just threw it in my Amazon cart and got on with it. <clears throat> Hello, Misty. First time catching me live. Yay. I'm so glad you're here. 
So I picked up this book and this is what we had been working with. And it got me to thinking, um, well, this is perfect. This is perfect for a discussion and for practice of basic shapes. And honestly, I have to be honest about this book. I think they could have even gone deeper into the basic shapes in some of these. So today I thought we would like work through some fish and maybe a shark, um, a dolphin. We're gonna do a couple of these just to, you know, just to have fun. And I, it's a great way to break down <clears throat> how this whole basic shape thing works, all right? I'm gonna move my, my camera down here a little bit and get a little closer. Here we go. How's that look, y'all? Hi, Jennifer. I love it. I love that I can hear your accent in your comments. I love it. Hi, Tasha. Okay. So, friends, remember, get those comments going. I want to hear your. I want to see your comments. I want to. I want to answer your questions. But let's just get into it now. The key with sketching for me. <clears throat> And let me just rewind a smidgy. So sketching is going to inform your watercolor journey. Having an understanding of a basic shapes. Uh-oh. Look at that. I messed it up. Did I make all of them? I did. We're not gonna have we're not gonna have headers today because I screwed them up. Oh, you'll do them on the bottom? Good, yeah. Um, wow, it was late. I think I was doing those those overlays at like one in the morning. Anyhow, so understanding the basic form, the basic shapes that are, are in, inherently built into anything you try to paint or draw, understanding them through sketching <clears throat> is going to help you create more um, satisfying watercolor paintings, more convincing watercolor paintings. So that is what I you know, want to put out there. Is it required? No, but it can certainly help. So let's do this little, isn't this Nemo? This is kind of a Nemo situation, isn't it? Clownfish. Yeah. So we're going to start with an oval. We're going to just go, we're going to go right at it. We're going to do a light oval And the key friends. This is light. I know this is very light. I'm sorry, but that is the whole point. You gotta, you gotta go light <clears throat> because you don't want to like, when you're in the roughing in stage, goodness gracious, you don't want to press hard because if you do have to erase, it's going to be really hard for that, those eraser marks to disappear. Now over here, they have kind of already just a very custom shape. For the tail, I would just do another circle. And for the fins, I would do little ovals. I, I, would, I would break this down even more than this book does. So see what I have here, I have a very strange looking thing. Then you edit. So you lightly rough in the most basic shapes to the point that your light sketch looks quite abstract, okay? And then we edit. So rough in and then edit. So let's do this. So I see at the end of the drawing, we kind of want his head to be skinnier, his tail, the end towards his tail skinnier, and then his belly the biggest. So we're going to edit, and you can stay light at this point. You can stay light, you can stay light. The other thing about sketching is it's all about relationships. So for example, where does this fin start in relationship to the head here? Where does it start? How far away? We don't want to start it back here. That would be too far away. So your eye is always bouncing around to all the different spots that you want to capture. <clears throat> um, did you cut your paper to be a circle? Or did I buy it like that? I know. I love it. This is Paul Rubens, 100% cotton watercolor paper. You can get it on Amazon. Um, I think I may have it in my Amazon favorites uh, page. I'm not sure, but I think I do. So your eye is always bouncing around, bouncing around, right? Let's go back here and edit this tail. It's not really a circle. It tapers as it comes towards the, the, um, the back end of the fish shape, right? 
And then I'm noticing that I actually, when I roughed in, I've got these fins too far away from the tail. See, there's a lot of distance here compared to the distance here. So I'm going to edit that. I'm going to edit that and come in and, and just edit. And while I'm editing my shape, I'm going to edit the distance. Right? That's why sketching lightly is so important because I can erase. I can't, now I'm going a little darker just so y'all can see what the heck it is that I'm doing, but that's why it's so important. I'm going to look at the distance here and see where I want to start editing this shape. All right. And then last but not least, I'm going to go ahead. Where's the distance? This one's going to come down here a little bit. All right. Now give yourself grace when you're sketching. It doesn't need to be exactly like your inspiration. It does not. I promise you. It'll still be cool looking. It'll still be effective if you take some liberties. All right. And then I'm just connecting the dots here between the fins going from bot top to bottom um, and getting his little smile in there. And then I might, it feels, it's very satisfying to go ahead and erase the areas that need to be erased. We'll talk more about erasing later on. I promise you it is a big question, huge question. What do you do with your pencil lines before you start painting? You ask me that all the time and you know what I, you know what I say but sometimes I do erase and this is one of those times. All right, and continue editing. If you're starting to feel confident about the shapes that you've laid down, you can start going a little darker depending on the style of artwork that you're after. I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with what I've got going here. So I am gonna go ahead and darken these lines at this point. <clears throat> All right. And we've got our clownfish and we're, we're definitely, I mean, it looks a little bit more like a shark in the face, but you know, what else? I'm going to just soften that a little bit. So a couple of things to remember with sketching. Your eye is constantly moving back and forth between your page and your inspiration photo. If you're drawing from your imagination, that's a whole different ball game, but I really love, um, really, really love to have an inspiration photo. So uh, I'm a fan. So your eyes always back and forth, back and forth. Your eye is checking for basic shapes and proximity, distance, and edges. You're always looking at the edges and the distance between things. So looking at the fact that the belly in the middle is the thickest and it's a little bit narrower at the at the nose and then it's it's most narrow overall at the tail and you're always just examining all of those relationships really important really important friends remember i am here to answer your questions whatever they may be i'm gonna go ahead and do <clears throat> you okay there are you laughing at me <laughs> i thought he was laughing at me i think he just coughed but <laughs> I thought I said something like really silly. Um, all right, let's go ahead. I want to do this cute little fish. Isn't he cute? I, I do have to say, I can't wait to actually um, watercolor these because they're just precious. All right, so let's talk about distances here. Um, let's talk about distances. So uh, I'm just going to put a little line here for these little fins and make sure I kind of have that distance, what I want. I'm going to do a little oval up here. You can also think about using like triangles to help you understand the relationship. So I can think about the triangle that would go from here to here to this fin and back here, right? I'm going to go ahead and draw in my book and to kind of see if my triangle on the page matches the triangle that I sketched over here. And it kind of does. And then another little oval here. 
And then this is always a tough part. Like, where does the face go? I'm not going to worry about it yet. I'm going to go and rough in, uh, edit in the petals more. I love to use a needable eraser, eraser with my sketching. It knocks back the darkness, but if you just roll it over the sketch, your lines won't go away completely. Love that. I love that so much. Such a great tip. Thank you so much for sharing that because it's, it's a great one. All right, I'm going in, I'm gonna edit these shapes. Is anybody sketching along with me today? I would love to know. Anybody sketching along? Maybe you're sketching something different. Would love to know. All right, let's see here. And then up here, and I'm gonna turn this oval into more of a thin kind of shape. And then this one, this actually could have been two ovals like this. That probably would have made more sense than just one oval. All right. Now, hit the eye line is really kind of straight across. And it's really in like that bottom quarter. Like if I split him in half and then split, split he's actually even a little bit further down than the bottom corner, quarter. So right about here. And this eye is bigger and this eye is smaller and then a little mouth and then the gills. Is that what they're called? They're called gills. And my fish looks strange. Why does he look strange? The eyes aren't in the right place. So we give it a whirl, we edit. Here we go. There's some little gills down there. And lightly, that's better. All right. Uh, Michael, Michael is sketching on with us. What is a great, good brand for a soft needable eraser? Somebody can eat. We answer that a good brand. I don't use need the needable erasers. Um, every time I get one for one reason or another, um, <clears throat> I let them dry out. It's terrible. Um, Judy is sketching along, but you're so impatient. I find that skipping the first step and moving right into the details. Yes. And that is, you know, we do have to, to deal with our impatience, right? We, we have to. Now, if you are, I'll be honest, you know, I've been sketching for a while. And, and I want to say this. This is important. I was thinking about this this morning as I was preparing. I think it's important for me to say this. Like, I am not by any means a master illustrator, friends. You know, I can hold my own. I feel confident that I can teach the basics of sketching, I but I am no master illustrator, all right? I'm just not. But it's important to know that once you do gain a little more confidence, you may feel like you do start skipping over some of the first initial, you know, basic shape kind of um, moments and that you can hop right into, I wouldn't necessarily, necessarily say details, um, but that you certainly could start hopping into some more of the shape and the editing stage, so to speak. So that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. I feel like painting. So I'm going to paint, go with your, go with your joy, go with what your instinct is telling you. I always say friends, what do I say? Paint in a way that keeps you motivated to keep painting to keep making art. So it felt like I wanted to get a little color on here, on this guy. And the color I'm adding today to these sketches, friends, is meant to be fun. I, I'm hoping here to just make a little like sea creature situation. Maybe we'll sketch in some bubbles at some point, <clears throat> but have fun with it. So at some point, if you're like, gosh, I really don't feel like sketching anymore. I really want to add some color to this bad boy, then by all means, please just do that. If that's what your gut is telling you, do that, right? I'm going to go up here and get some color on this, 
on this clownfish on Nemo up here. I am using my filbert in case you were wondering. I am doing wet on dry with my filbert. So fun. I love Nemo. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Ooh. I'm using the Art for Joystick palette today, of course. Um, and oh gosh, can I tell you how much I adore a filbert? They're such such a fun brush. Friends, we are gonna have a giveaway today later, a little bit later on. And I'm using the wrong palette. I want this one. <clears throat> And uh, I do have a really fun sneak peek reveal coming up as well, which I'm pretty jazzed about. Hello, Elliot. Thanks for being here. Misty says, I'm painting, but something different. I'm behind on finishing World Watercolor Month. Ah, you have two days to complete it. I love it. I don't care what you're painting. As long as you're painting with me, that makes me happy. Love it, love it, love it. All right, and he needs an orange tail. Who was here yesterday for our crazy day of cutouts and all that kind of fun stuff? Who was here with us? Because that was fun. That was super fun. I was pretty jazzed after that session. There was lots of energy, lots of energy. Sorry, I'm hitting the... Would it be possible for you to do a contest with something other than the birthdays? Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, somebody needs to think of an idea because my uh, my uh, right brain or whichever is the artist brain, my right brain um, is stuck on birthdays. So somebody give me an idea. That's for sure. All right. <clears throat> feel like all right we have what is this a puffer fish angel fish we have a dolphin oh let's do a dolphin here's the gym uh i was it was fun i'm glad you were here sheila thank you thank you okay so let me know in comments how do you feel about the basic shape thing when you try to sketch do you try, do you kind of adhere to the whole basic shape thing? Is that, is that kind of your jam? Or are you like, eh, throw caution to the wind and see what happens? I'm curious. I'm really curious. And again, there's no, there's no right answer. I'm just, I'm curious to see and hear on the regular what folks are doing. I really am. Very curious. Getting in here with this basic kind of oval shape for our dolphin. And I'm getting right into the editing part of this. And I see a question coming up. What do you think is best for outlining? Microns don't seem like a good fit for watercolor paper. Uh, would you recommend ink and then a fancy dip pen or something else? Great question. Um, and I will get right to that. Um, I've been using, and we're going to be talking about them here soon. Uh, where did she go? I have been using these Faber-Castile pit pens. Um, this, this one in particular is, um, can you? Thanks. Uh, this is, I'm trying to look up the number. What's the number? It, I always get confused at how they label their pens. There's an M on here. Um, and it says black 199. I don't know what the actual number is, but let, let's see how this one does. I always find this one to work really well. So let's go in here and I'm going to edit this shape with my, my pit pen. And then we're going to go ahead and watercolor right on over it and see how it does. I've had pretty good success. Oh, I forgot to add in that little fin. Oh, it's okay. And see, there are moments like that, just like with watercolor, you're gonna have these, oh, crud moments. And the point is to not panic, never panic. And then we just look for a way to, to fix it. 
and I'm just gonna fix it just just like that. It's all good. It's all good. And let's go ahead and erase. And that'll be our first test. This is the pen that I use. I have that one video about sketching flowers. And I used this pen and I found it to be incredibly resilient. Like, look, I'm I'm lightly erasing and it it's not smearing. So that's always a good sign, right? <clears throat> and let's go ahead into the watercolor. Kelly, did I miss a question? I heard I heard a beep, but did I miss a question? I think I may have. All right, let's get in here with some fun watercolor and see what happens. Here it is. Um, what made you to decide to devote the time to develop this series? So grateful for you. Oh. Well, um, a couple of reasons, and I'll be, a um, couple of them are, one of them makes a whole lot of sense, and one of them is a little bit more of like a back-end type of situation. So, um, most importantly, there were some core topics that <clears throat> I really needed to cover, and I wanted to cover them in more depth, and... I wanted to cover them in a way that there was some more interaction. So like, I didn't want to just create a static uploadable video. Um, okay. I didn't want to just upload a static video that assumed I knew what questions, what issues, what frustrations you had about basic watercolor techniques, about composition, about drawing. I wanted there to be an opportunity for feedback because these are such important, important topics. So I felt live was the best, best way to go. Um, and these topics are so important. They're so core that I wanted to have them in my library um, as a way, because I get asked all the time in comments, like, do you have a video on this? And the topics that I decided to cover this week, those were a lot of the topics that people were like, do you have a video on this? And I was like, uh, not yet. And so, so that was a big, big push behind, behind why. Um, the other reason <clears throat> was more of a kind of, um, I'm going to go over here. Um, as I answer this question, because this is a, an involved question, I want to show you that you can erase after watercolors apply. You won't get a full erase, but you'll get a partial. So you can do that. That's a nice little effect. I'm still trying to figure out why this little dude's eyeballs don't look right to me. But you know, like whatever. I actually think I want to make his eyes the same size. Yeah. See, the eyes weren't the same size in this, in my inspiration image, but it wasn't working. And so I'm making them the same size in my sketch and it's working now. Um, the second reason was I, I had two editors. I, I have editors that edit my videos because I really, I know how to edit, but I mostly enjoy filming and, and talking and all the things. And so one of my editors gave her notice and my other editor was, was really excited to kind of pick up the, the slack, so to speak, but we wanted to find a way to kind of get ahead um, and to get to a point where um, we were delivering videos uh, a week ahead of time. And so I needed a way to kind of pause our schedule so that he didn't have to worry about um, delivering any videos this week and he could use the time to get ahead on editing, if that makes sense. So it was just like the perfect little storm that led to a really nice benefit, I think, for, for all of you. And that is the very, very long-winded answer to your wonderful question, and I hope that helps. Um, but, you know, a lot of work went into this series. I have scripts for each day and all sorts of stuff. So it, it was, it, you know, it's an investment. And I do certainly hope that, um, that, that 
shines through for you because uh, I really, it meant a lot to me to make sure that this was good and useful and practical, but also exciting and fun. So, all right, enough of that. Oh, I recently discovered um, Cotty Handmade 100% Recycled Cotton Rag Paper from India. And I love it. I have that in my cart right now. I have not tried it. I have it in my cart. I need to just order. I need to just order. I really do. Someone else had recommended it to me a few months ago. Mm. And I didn't, I didn't hit, hit the go button on that. So I need to. How do you feel about it? Are you loving it? I'm assuming it looks to be um, quite textured. And that has me really, that's inspiring to me. So I love texture on my watercolor paper. I'm a fan. I'm going to put some extra gills here. And I'm going to pop in a couple bubbles and then we're going to move on. We're going to talk about drawing tools um, while we're at it. And while I'm waiting to hear about this watercolor paper, friends, let me know what your favorite um, drawing tools are. I would love to know. I would love to know. I do not like that fish. I That fish can go home. Bye-bye. I don't care for him, but that's okay. Oh my gosh. It's good to be honest with yourself instead of beating yourself up about something you don't love. It's so much more refreshing and, and healthy. So to just be like, you know what? I don't like that. Later on when I'm feeling like it, I'm going to figure out why it didn't work and maybe I'll try it again. And you know what? Maybe I won't try it again. That is the attitude I want you to take on. That is the attitude. Uh, my favorite drawing tools. Let's see. Mechanical pencil. Yes. And yes, and yes, and yes. I love, love me a mechanical pencil. All right, cool. All right, let's talk about drawing tools. Kadi, I love it as much as Arsh. And I'm trying to be good and say Arsh, but it's always going to be Arches to me. Funny. Bye bye, fish. Bye. You know what I do make a practice of? Do you want to see something I do? You're probably going to just cry. I do this when I'm sketching because I also do a lot of like scanning of my artwork. I will do this. If I don't like something, I will, I will cross that mother out. And it, it just kind of erases it. I'll, I'll just be like, nope, you didn't work. I don't like you knowing that I will just cut these out into cute little shapes and scan them and put them into another design. And I'm going to use them somehow, but no, you're done. We're not going to continue to think about you. It's very freeing. Try it. Very freeing. So I know you think I'm insane right now. You all are like, this girl is crazy. Okay. Let's talk about your utensils. Should we call them utensils? Probably not. Let's talk about your drawing implements. Your drawing implements. Um, what is the name of the book again? Yes. And I'm going to link that below. It's not in any of my list yet, but I will link this below. How to draw cute stuff. How to draw cute stuff. Draw anything and everything in the cutest style ever. Um, I mean, alligators, I'm monkeys. They even have like, oh, I love this section. I, I'm working through this, like little witches and wizards and um, little ninjas. I mean, so cute. So cute. Love this book. All right. Okay. Let's talk about these drawing implements because I really have my favorites and there's a couple that I use the most. Um, Somebody asked me about this clip. I just want to mention it here. I'm going to put these in my Amazon shop. If you want to do this trick where you clip the paper towel to your palette. Um, but they're just little, what are these clips called, honey? Do we know what they're called? But they're rose gold and they just are pretty because they match my brushes and everything. So anyhow, I will get those in on my Amazon page. 
And then I use them to keep my sketchbook flatter. All right. So, okay. We've got some of my favorites. Butterfly clips. There we go. Thank you, Kelly. Any old pencil. Usually any old pencil, like a school pencil, is a 2B. All right. Then you've got, this is um, one of those, what are these called? Um, black wing. They're, they always feel like a 6B to me. I don't actually know if they come in different softnesses. They are not my favorite pencil, but I'd be remiss not to mention them because they are super trendy and everybody loves them. And But they're a very soft. The, at least the ones I have are very soft. This one feels very much like a 6B, so it's softer. Um, the B and H thing, so just quick. H and B. And then HB. This is kind of your range. So you're going to have all the different, like H is going to be the, it's a harder lead. It's going to produce a light line. But if you press hard on your paper with an H pencil of any kind, you're going to make an indentation very easily because the lead, there's no forgiveness. There's no give to it. Bs are extremely soft. So even when you press hard, it's not going to indent your paper as easily. And then HB, my personal fave, right in the middle. She rides right in the middle. I love me, my HB. And just got to paint her in a little heart because I love her so much. That's my favorite. And so you have two H's, three H's, four H's. And you have all, you know, I think there's like 11 B's and 10 B's and, you know, all the things. So that that that's that. Then you have your mechanical pencil. This one has become one of my new favorites. Um, it's a zebra brand. I have this in my Amazon list. If you want to put that Amazon list, I keep talking about it a lot. I mean, you can get this stuff anywhere. But if you want to know the brand name before, you know, because I don't, I'm really bad at knowing and remembering brand names. It says the Tech Away Light. Um, and it's from Zebra. <clears throat> love this. Love, love, love. Um, great for finer detail. Question here. HB is... Goldilocks. <laughs> Love that. Um, I mentioned my favorite inky um, drawing pens, favorite Castile pit pens, by far my favorite. I do have microns. There's something about microns. I don't feel they're as robust when it comes to watercolor. Because remember, I was able to sketch with this pit pen and then immediately watercolor over it and no bleeding. This was just me making a smudgy because I dropped water, but no bleeding. Is the higher the number, the softer the pencil? So yes, in the B range, um, um, I believe actually, I don't use H's, but I believe yes, the higher the number is softer, but the higher, I think the higher the number on the H side is the harder the lead is. Somebody correct me on that. But like a 2B isn't as soft as a 6B. And a 6B isn't as soft as a 10B. That makes sense. Thanks, Kelly. Yes. So love pit pens. Love them so much. A few years ago, they sent me a box full of all the things. And these were in there and I fell in love. And they come in colors too, which I adore. <clears throat> now here is, here's the, the, the dark horse of sketching um, utensils. There I am again with that utensils implement a black ballpoint pen okay let's just let's just talk about it. i'm going to sketchy sketch a little something here with the black ballpoint pen and i want to tell you a story why a black ballpoint pen is so daggone interesting i i just i need to tell you because it's it's quite um it's not what you would think right you wouldn't imagine that a ballpoint pen, it just seems kind of pedestrian, right? But it's so interesting. I'm like looking for something. Oh, Phoenix. Oh, I, this is a more difficult one. I want to draw Phoenix. Phoenix is my daughter's middle name. Um, let's go ahead. So a ballpoint pen, I'm following along here, friends. A ballpoint pen, once she gets going, has this lovely glide and now it's really better suited for 
gestural type sketchiness, right? Because you, let's face it, friends, you're not going to erase, right? Because, you know, it's a pen. <laughs> you're not going to erase. But it gives you this ability to almost shade as you sketch, right? Oh, heavens, I adore sketching with a ballpoint pen. And so if you've never tried it, I would highly recommend trying it at least once. Because look at, I went from, you know, outlines to shading immediately. And when you start trying it, it has the most lovely drag. The most, oh, I'm doing a little phoenix for my little fiener beaner. Oh my God, fiener beaner, honey, that's her new nickname. We call her Beaner. I don't know why. Um, her first mama chose her middle name and we loved it. Um, we were nervous because she wanted to choose her, her middle name. And we were like, okay, you know, it's the least you could do, uh, you know, given. Um, and, oh, we loved it. We loved it so much. Anywho, I'm going to call her Fiener Beaner. Anyway, back, you know, Christy, get back on track. Um. Uh, but look at that. Look at the lovely gradation. Fiener Beaner. <laughs> Fiener Beaner. Um, Jot, um, Jas says, uh, me too, ballpoint pens. Glad you brought that out. Yes. Yes. They're so fun. Did somebody say they've been my go-to since ballpoints, my go-to since the 80s? Oh, the 80s. Yeah. Good times. So, so yeah, I really... I really would love for you to try a ballpoint. Like today, friends, like just do it. Today, at some point, when we're done here, I want you to get in, find a ballpoint. I don't even care if it's blue. Who cares? Just do it because the feel of it under your hand and on the paper and the way that it resists, it, it feels very forgiving. It gives some incredible um, textures and results without a whole lot of effort. I mean, look at her. I feel like, friends, I gotta tell you, I've had a secret little dream of mine. I want to illustrate and write a children's book. But you know, so many children's books are all about characters and I'm not, I'm not a confident portrait character developer, but I, gosh, I feel like I could get my game on with some ballpoint pen character illustration, right? So anyhow, it's very invigorating. It's, um, it's one of those, there's certain things in our creative life that kind of crack open our creative brain, but um, can you do the jellyfish later? Uh, remind me, I will, I'll try. Um, there's certain things that kind of crack open our brain creatively, whether it's a supply, whether it's a, something someone says, um, and, and, and for me, this particular slot supply has that creative kind of cracking ability, if you will. And so please give it a try. Please, please give it a try. Well, you know what, while we're at it, let's do the jellyfish. Cause you know, there's no time limit on this meal. Now, let me tell you a story about that phrase. I use that all the time. I know we're not eating, but let me tell you a story. Story time as I find the jellyfish. My uh, paternal grandfather, he was quite a character. I never met him. He um, passed when I was quite young, but he was a character, so I'm told. And he loved to eat, right? Loved to eat. And um, he would sit down at the head of the table. He'd make sure everybody had what they needed. Um, and he would sit down finally once he felt everybody had what they needed and he would eat for hours and he would just languish at the table in the most loveliest of ways and these dinners would last for hours and my mom and dad always say good lord if he were alive at the time of buffets he put them out of business but my point is i always use he would sit down and say there's no time limit on this meal there's no time limit and it was his way of saying, there's no time limit on this beautiful experience that we're having because it's not just a meal, we're sharing and yeah. And so I find myself 
using that phrase often when I'm talking about there's no time limit on this fun that we're having. So feel free to go ahead and steal that. Uh, go ahead and steal that. Which one should I do? Here's the, the creepy one that kills you, right? Is it, what's that called? The jellyfish that kills you? The, the, the night stalker? No, I don't know. There's the one that, I don't know. Let's, um, let's, let's do this cuter looking one. And I'm going to do it with the ballpoint. Yes. Um, let me get up to speed here on these comments. <laughs> the squid. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The squid is cute. Okay. Let's go here. Let's go time. So oval, but really, let's face it. It's kind of like a kidney bean. And then a triangle, right? I'm not going to worry about the tentacles yet. I'm just going to go ahead and start. Did anybody watch my video on gesture drawing? Do you remember my video where I sketched the Cosmo flower um, and talked about the idea of gesture drawing um, from my college days? Well, ballpoint pens really, really lend themselves to gesture drawing. Just going to say. They really do. And. This needs to go out a little further. Oh, she's cute. Hello. And I have the mouth too high, but whatever. I'm going to put a little, add a little something, something there. Given the practice of talking to yourself um, when you're sketching, there ain't nothing wrong with it. And it does a wonder for your, your creative spirit. I find that talking to myself, it's not so much I'm talking to myself, I'm talking myself through something, talking yourself through something. You're, you're figuring out verbally while you're figuring out visually, right? It's good. It's good for you. So go ahead and give that a try. Talk to yourself. Anybody else here talk to themselves while they're sketching, while they're painting? Let me know in comments. Oh, she's cute. Let's get the liner brush out because y'all know, you know what? I am going to add another utensil to my favorite arsenal. And let's just face it, I'm leaving out the black wing because she's not my favorite. I'm going to add the liner brush, friends, to my favorite arsenal of sketching tools because she is my favorite. I love Mary talks to herself all the time. So does Cheryl. I love it. Yeah. <clears throat> Mary, um, Stenick talks to herself. Oh, Stenick talks to herself all the time when she's doing anything. That makes me feel better. Portuguese man of war. Yep, yeah, that's the one that kills you in like one shot. Yes, I, I, I'm preferring the cutie like um, Norwegian cutie pie uh, uh, jellyfish here. I just gave him a new name that just made more sense. That you know the kind that won't kill you. I just made up a name. Anywho, um, so I'm going in here. I, I can feel y'all shaking your head at me right now. <clears throat> and I want to add um, a little bit of color and texture. <gasps> oh, I love this. Does anybody else love the look of this? Ballpoint, sketchy sketch with the liner brush, some dry brush, little scratchy, bouncy, swirly do action. Oh, you know what I else? You know what I, you know what I else? This is what happens. I sing when I'm excited. I also lose my ability to speak clearly when I'm excited. Um, she needs rosy cheeks right there. Rosy, hi, hi, rosy cheeks. Oh my gosh, she's so cute. I love it. The box jellyfish, ooh. <clears throat> oh, he is cute, right? Look at. Okay, I'm going to do one more of these sketches with my liner brush um, and also my detail brush that's coming out would be great for that. But I have inconveniently lost the sample of that, so I'm going to use the new 8th inch dagger also along with the liner. And any, any, any requests for which one of these bad boys I sketch next? We got bugs. We got, um, uh, oh, cute. We got stingrays. We got um, a hammerhead shark. My son loved that one. We did that one together. 
Any requests on what I should sketch next? Hmm. What is this? A fluffy jellyfish? I don't understand. This one's weird looking. I don't get it. Any requests? Shells. Let me see. Are there shells in here? I could probably just do a shell from memory. Oh, look at all the candy. Oh my gosh. I love it. But we do need to focus. Um, a shell. Let's do a shell. All right. Let's start. So we're going to do, I have a shell on the table. Where'd it go? You know, I'm, I'm a sucker for having something in front of me. I, I just am. I'm just a sucker for that. <clears throat> so inspiration, inspiration. Okay. So holding this brush almost perpendicular, I'm using a very light color. I'm using the tip of this brush and I'm kind of like establishing the swirl. See how this kind of swirls with a curve? Like the whole thing kind of curves. So I'm, I'm establishing that in my sketch. It looks very messy and crazy and weird right now. Be okay with the crazy, messy, and weird. There's going to be, you know how I say like paint through the ugly? Well, be okay with the crazy and messy and weird stages. Let's go in now with our ballpoint. We are, this is like a little foreshadowing for our mixed media day tomorrow. Who's going to be here on mixed media day? Tell me in comments who's coming, who's going to be here. I want to know about it. And I am just sketching these layers, sketching these layers, loosey goosey. Uh, Kelly, it looks like it's called Don't Try Sketching Without a Sharpie. I don't know what that conversation is about, but I'm going to just let that go. Yeah. And then we can go in with, and this may, this, who knows, friends, this may be a failed attempt at what you requested me to do, but, you know, whatever. But it's a fun start. And we can add in some dry brush. If you were here for Monday, we talked about dry brush and the ability to create some really compelling textures when we need them. And I'm following the curve. See the curve here? I am kind of following that curve. And this should be a little wider. And I'm going to do that with the eighth inch dagger. Make that a little wider, but I'm going to do it with dry brush. Yeah. Oh yeah. A little peach for some shadow and a little peach and a little peach and a little peach. And you could just keep going and you could keep refining this, this shell. Oh, she's fun. Look at all the fun textures we're getting. Is it my favorite shell in the whole wide world that I've ever done? No, but it was fun. And it makes me, you know what I love when I have like moments with my sketches that I'm not like hundred percent happy with. I do love though, when I have moments with sketches or paintings that inspire me to try it again. It's a bummer when you do something and you're like, I am never doing that again. Right. But when you have moments where you're like, okay, I know how I could make this better. I know now how I can make this more convincing. I know now, the I know now, that's your brain saying, do this again, girl. Do this again, boy. Do this again, you. That's your brain. That's a good thing. Boy, I like it a lot better now when I put those little scratchy marks in. So anyway, you want to think about your experiences that way. Don't think about it wasn't perfect. It wasn't what I hoped for. It wasn't as effortless as like this little guy, this little guy felt effortless. This one didn't. The This guy felt effortless. This one didn't. But I still am inspired enough. I have enough momentum that I want to try it again. And that is a good thing. That is a good thing. All right. Lorna, I see you with you and your waves. I see it. I see it. Hmm. So in the context of kind of what we're doing here, I mean, the waves would be for me at this point more abstract. Um, 
a betta fish. Oh my gosh, so fun. I am doing mixed media tomorrow. Yes. Replay is fine, Antonia. Replay is fine. So waves, I would probably do something like this. Kind of that hook type of look. You see that? And then repeat them. And again, this is kind of like going along the lines of what makes sense with the style we've been working in so far today, which is a sketchy kind of cartoony-ish moment, right? So that hook. And then I would go in, I'm going to use my 12 round, get some blue from the Art for Joy Sake palette. And I would press, drag, and lift. And press, I'm going to do that again. Press, drag, and lift. Wait, what was that? Do y'all see that? What are you doing? Oh, good Lord. Adam, what are you doing? Oh, he thinks he's cute. Press, drag, and lift. <laughs> so I would do that for one stroke. Okay, apparently Adam thinks he's adorable. I mean, which he is. I'm not going to lie. But um, there's, there's the little press dragon with the glasses and all with the glasses and all. <laughs> That's one adorable dragon. Oh my gosh. And so I would just bleed out the color and let it kind of follow and the sketch lines, but I would go over some of the sketch lines, but I do still want some of the sketch lines to remain. And so again, along with the style that we're doing today, that's kind of how I would do some cartoony waves. Um, I might also, let me see if I can pull this off quickly. I need to do a time check. Yeah, we're good. I might do some spatter. Oh yeah, I'm so glad I did the spatter. Yep, that's what I would do. I know, I'm saying press, drag, and lift. I know, I know. But I do think that little, can you put her up again? I wanna see her again. Let's see her. She's cute. Oh my gosh, she's cute. And look what's in her mouth. It's a flat wash brush. <laughs> <coughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Friends, how are we feeling? How are we feeling? We are going to be doing a uh, paint along at the end of today. Um, as we continue through these little smaller sessions, just know that if you are. Thanks, Lori. See you soon. Um, and now I want waffles. Okay. I think I missed part of that conversation. So anyway, we are going to be doing a longer um, paint along. Uh, I have a couple more things I want to go through with you because another big question that I get um, is, I get this question a lot. Um, what do you do with your pencil lines, Christy? What do you do with your pencil lines like you you leave them like really you leave your pencil lines um and i want to show you something <clears throat> so i brought this painting out quite a bit yesterday uh, there's a lot of different ways to approach pencil lines what to do with them after you've started a painting or before or during or do you leave them or do you try to totally obscure them First and foremost, know this about me. I don't worry about them. For me and the way I paint my personal style, they disappear. So I just want to show you, I sketched this in a decent amount of detail before I started painting. And do you see, I mean, I do see a few pencil lines, but do you really see pencil lines? Do you? And this painting, I wouldn't even call this painting completed, but this pencil lines completely disappear. Do you see them? I do need to make stickers of the dragon, but I think that's the Shrek lady dragon actually. So I'm gonna have to draw my own dragon. <laughs> anyway, my point is if don't, don't worry about 
don't worry about your pencil lines. Did somebody say something about flowers? As cute as, um, I love watching you sketch your florals in your other videos. As cute as the little dudes are, are you going to be um, getting into how you sketch florals? Hey, I certainly can. Friends, I, I'll be honest. When I decided on the subject matter for today, I was responding to, it's so funny. When I sketch flowers, I get asked for critters and cats and portraits. And so now when I'm sketching critters, I get asked for florals. So I'm not, I'm not making fun. I just love it. So um, I will happily break down a flower for you before we leave today, for sure. For sure. Because that's my jam. <clears throat> anyway, um, so if you don't want to worry about pencil lines, you don't need to. Now, if you're more of a full-on hyper-realism painter with watercolor, then pencil lines may feel obtrusive for you. And so you can think about that as you're mapping out your pieces. The needable eraser thing would really, really come in handy um, to kind of when you just sketch the very, very light outline. Um, I follow a bunch of artists on Instagram. Um, I can't think of the names right now, of course, but they are just absolutely gorgeous florals and portraits. And you see them sketch a very, very basic silhouette of what they're going to do. And maybe some of the petal contours in a floral piece um, and it's extremely light and that will totally disappear. <clears throat> I don't sketch as light on, on the regular as a general rule. So, um, but still, even, even still my pencil lines almost completely disappear. So before we move on, <clears throat> let me go ahead and break down a floral, um, in this same way, um, because this is more cartoony of course. So let's break down a floral. What do I have? I have some pieces here. I have some Lizzie Anthus. Um, let's do a Lizzie. Ooh, that camera is messed up. Okay. Let's do a Lizzie. And we'll break it down. Look at that. I love kind of bossing around my flowers to open them up or whatever the case may be. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to use my, my HB <laughs> if I can find it, which I can't. So I'm just, I'm having a love affair with the ballpoint. So I'm going to go for it. I usually start with a basic shape for the center of the flower and then the outer bounds. And I think about how close is the bottom petal to the center. And that's going to depend on the angle. If I have an angle like this, the center is going to be up way higher, but I'm, I'm looking at it from a top down. So that center is pretty darn central. And then I typically will start breaking down shapes these kind of rounded, today, rounded rectangles, some ovals, or rounded triangles, goodness, not rounded rectangles, some more ovals. And I'm constantly, I'm looking up, I'm looking over, I'm, I'm constantly checking my distances, my relationship, my edges, right? And then I start to refine. Um, yeah. then I'll start to go in and refine these shapes. This little petal here is, is wider here, skinnier here. I'll make that happen. Refine. This petal here goes underneath this one. I'll make that happen. <clears throat> this one really tapers very obviously as it goes towards the center here. And then it has this like flounce on the outer edge of the silhouette. And then there's some petals in here that are just weird and curly. 
and I might rough them in. And now this is a different style of artwork because I'm using a ballpoint pen that is not going to disappear, right? I noticed this kind of like quill-like petal right here and I decided to add that in. I'm gonna add in some of the stamens that I'm noticing now in the middle. And then I'm going to add some of these roughly flouncy moments here and there. Very gestural. And then we paint. And, and that is the basics of how I would break down. Ooh, my brush did not want to get dampened there. How I would break down the shape of a flower. Again, though, very gestural here with this particular one. Top down floral um, abstracts visually very easily because everything is flat, right? So let's talk about a flower from a side view. All right, now I'm gonna hold it so I'm looking at it and it's at a side view. I would still start with circles, ovals, one here in the middle, see, one here, tapering at the bottom, right? I'm gonna flip it again, another oval here, another one up here, that left oval is to kind of capture this. That right oval is to capture this really slight side partial view. And then I'm looking at these folds where the petal curls back towards me. And I'm only seeing part. I'm seeing a skinny oval here. And I'm seeing one here. And I'm seeing a little bit of it here, right? These, right here. I'm breaking them down so far as to just call them ovals. And then I'm going in and refining and refining and adding in the stem and where it creeps up, where that gorgeous green starts creeping up. I just drew on that flower. That's hysterical, right? Refining, refining. Maybe there's a leaf, right? Continue refining. I'm gonna refine this oval because she looks weird because it's not an oval, but you refine. And these aren't ovals, so you refine. Constantly letting that eye bounce around. <clears throat> that leaf is or that petal is curling towards me. I refine that under edge of the oval I laid down here, right? And refine. And then I feel like a painting. Feel like a painting. And your flower starts to appear, but it all started with a bunch of really oversimplified circles and ovals. And that is a lovely, lovely thing. Building your flower initially with circles and ovals gives you time to build confidence in what you're doing. And when you're not doing it with a ballpoint pen that can't erase, you can have even more confidence because you can erase. Now I want to say one thing about erasing, hear me. If you've been halfway listening, and that is fine, I halfway listen all the time, but if you've been halfway listening up to this point or recently, listen to me now. <clears throat> if you get in an eraser cycle, and an eraser cycle looks a little something like this. You make a mark. No, oh, that's not perfect. I'm gonna erase it. You make another few marks. Oh, that's not right. Dang it, I'm gonna erase it. And you repeat that. And the next thing you know, you are erasing so hard, you've got eraser. Um, debris everywhere and you're frustrated and you're getting hot and you're aggravated, you are in an eraser cycle. Put it down, put it down, push the artwork away, try it again on a scrap piece of paper, take a beat. When you notice you're in an eraser cycle, the best thing you can do for yourself is to get out of it because you are on your way to frustration land. That is my advice for you. All right, hopefully this was helpful. <clears throat> 
Uh, Elaine says, my brain to my hand is not getting this. My sketches look awful. Okay. I would love to say this, and I, I we all do it. Oh, this looks gross. Oh, this looks awful. Let's be more specific with ourselves. Instead, and I don't know what your specific issue is, but I'm going to, I'm going to critique myself right now in a more, what I have learned is a more valuable way right here. I'm going to draw an arrow. The curl of this petal doesn't feel convincing. I could easily say my drawing looks awful, okay? I could easily say that, and I do still say that. I'm not saying like, shame on you for blah, 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 blah. No, because I do it myself. I just want to give you and everyone a better way to try to examine and critique yourself so that you can still feel uplifted and motivated. The curl of this petal doesn't yet feel convincing. It's not ugly. It's still interesting in a gestural way, but it doesn't feel convincing. Okay? So think of better ways. Think of more um, kind ways descriptive ways you see this pencil this is totally a 6b ways of critiquing yourself if you're sketching with me write that down and practice it and here's the next part you have built a habit not just you who made the comment i'm so sorry i forget your name already because i have a terrible memory you, me, we build these habits of critiquing ourselves in really harsh yet completely, um, what is the word I want? There's a very specific word. We built habits of critiquing ourselves in ways that are not descriptive. Yes. This sucks. I said it before, but why do you feel it sucks? Let's troubleshoot habits. I want you to rebuild the habit of critiquing yourself. Be descriptive. Rebuild the habit of critiquing yourself. Be descriptive, right? Learn from the suck. Amen. Amen. And Virginia, you know what? Some folks, I found out there's a name for it. I forget what it's called, but some people cannot imagine things in their head and they have to always sketch. Um, yeah, you say you cannot sketch from your head. There's a there's a name for that. What's that called? Yes, does this help? Does this help? Does this help? Carsey says, I accept my limitations, just love to push colored water around the paper. It helps me. Um, it helps me into a mindful state and create moments of joy. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I will tell you what, if this sketching thing is driving you insane, then stop and go do the thing that you know you love and brings you joy. You can always come back for incremental moments of learning a new thing with sketching later. Aphantasia. Yes. Get out of the moment. Walk away. Come back after a little while. Take a second look, but look again later. Thank you, Wanda. So important. Kelly, we put Wanda's comment, comment up. That's so important. That's so important. But I do. I want you to rebuild habits. Be descriptive. Right? Be descriptive. Like right here. I knew the minute I laid it down, but I had no choice because it, it was with ballpoint pen. Too thick. Doesn't look doesn't feel graceful. All right. So good. I'm so glad we went here. So glad. So glad we went here. Mm -hmm. 
you take a screenshot of anything today, let it be this. <laughs> let it be this. <clears throat> okay. We are going to move on. I want to talk about, now, are there any questions about this whole basic shape situation? I'd love to hear it. I'd love to hear it. And let's also get this, um, let's get this giveaway going. You wrote me a note I couldn't read, Adam. What the heck did it say? What imagery? Oh, oh, that's a hard one. All right, we're gonna do we're gonna do a couple giveaways today, and Adam has a really hard one. Um, <clears throat> will you pull it open? Because I think I remember what it was. It's it's going to Photoshop. It's in there under Streamyard. Um, okay, so what are we giving away? Let's take a break. This is your breathing moment. This is your just take a beat, take a moment, take a breath. If you have a question that you've been dying to ask, ask it now. But this is what you're going to win. I went and ate dinner in a creek. If you've been here all week, you know this story. And I created these little gifting bags. And it's a partial calendar. It's for the rest of the year. It starts on August 21st. That was the day of the dinner. <clears throat> it's going to be um, a Photoshop document, I believe, or a JPEG. Um, and it's a five-month calendar. And the, the question or the compelling statement is, these days will be my offering. These days that are remaining in 2022 will be uh, your offering. And so, <clears throat> yes. Uh, and so you're going to win this. We're going to ship it to you. And inside is the Artful Joy Seek Journal with, or journal, huh. I wish it was the Art for Joy's Sake journal. It's been out of print for far too long. The Art for Joy's Sake palette and my Queen Bee Art for Joy's Sake brush. This is a used one. Um, you will get a new one. And that's what you're going to receive. And we'll do a couple of these today. So the question is the first person, Kelly, get ready because this is going to be interesting. Sherry, please pick me, no shame. Um, the question is this, my friends. You remember the landscape that we did the other day? Which day was that, honey? Tuesday. Tuesday, I painted a landscape, a dark and moody landscape. What state was that landscape? The first place person to type it correctly, the first person is going to win. What state was that landscape from? Let us know in comments the first person to get it correct will receive the bag. Now, we're going to be giving away a couple of these today, my dear friends. It's, um, yeah, okay. Yeah, we got Woo! No, no. Who got it? No, Elaine. Misty. No, Misty. Misty. I think Misty got it. Y'all, it's Idaho. Who got it first? Kelly? I, I, Adam's saying Misty. Misty got it. We'll, we'll double check through that, but Misty got it. <laughs> I, I did provide that link in the, um, in, um, in the description and the state was in the name of the file. No, so, Sama. huh? Sama. 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 We'll give it to Sama and was Misty second? All right, we're going to give it to Sama and Misty because I exclaimed Misty was the winner so many times. I don't want to let her down. <laughs> All right, so Sama and Misty, I don't care where you live in the world. It doesn't matter. Uh, you're going to email, put that up, honey. Hello at ChristyRice.com. Attention, Kristen, let her know you are a winner of one of the canvas bags and give her your shipping address. If you are international, please provide a phone number as well. All right, friends, we're going to do another giveaway a little bit later. I'm going to let A.B. Adam here figure out what the next question should be because he had, he had a good one. That was, that was tricksy. I, I was shocked that so many people, oh, I just threw it on the floor. Whoops, I have a bad arm. Um, anywho, that was fun. Um, I thought I saw somebody asking about the name of the book. Um, 
It is How to Draw Cute Stuff. And it is by Angela Nagayan. Uh, Angela Nagayan. Super cute book. Love it. Not just for kids. The thing I love about this book, too, I can't stop talking about this book, is that you could easily, with some finesse and with some practice, turn these into less cartoony pieces, right? Add more detail, add a little bit more refined shapes. Yeah, super fun, super fun. I cannot wait. I'm going to give you a little sneaky peek. You want to see a little sneaky peek mm -hmm. at what we're going to paint together a little bit later? You ready? Got, oh, wait, he's upside down. You gotta look fast. You ready? You ready? You ready? You ready? What? It was a little sneaky peek, and the uh, I, I'm, I'm giving you all sorts of foreshadowing. Anyway, <clears throat> okay. I want to talk about more about pencil lines. We started talking about pencil lines, but we need to finish talking. We need. Well, you're never gonna be finished talking about these things, but. I want to talk about the styles. You've got pencil and wash. You've got pencil, you map it out with a pencil lightly and then you erase quickly. Then number three, you can do ink and wash, uh, line and wash, also called. And then my favorite style, sketch it and forget it. So let's start with pencil and wash. Now friends, um, you've seen my video about combining pencil with watercolor. And that is a perfect example of sketch and wash. I had a piece out yesterday. Let me see if I can find it quick. Um, but basically, I'm not gonna worry about it because I can't find it. Um, you sketch and then you watercolor and then you sketch and then you watercolor. This is a great way uh, to, and I'm gonna link that video below later on, sketch and watercolor because it's such a good one. So uh, I have some little daisy do's here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna snap one of these off and we'll sketch it, okay? So you start with your sketching and your basic shapes, right? Start there. This is pencil and wash. And then you start with some ovals here, directional to kind of map out right? Map out the shapes and the direction, right? You can also, I've talked about this in other videos, you can draw straight lines to indicate direction of different petals. Like this one kind of curves or curved lines. This one curves this way. This one curves this way and kind of hooks at the end. This one curves this way and hooks at the end. You see what I'm doing there? And then you can follow those lines with some of your edited oval shapes, right? Who's heard me talk about my edited oval shapes or my edited teardrops? I talk about them all the time and they're super dupes helpful, right? All right, so this is pencil and wash. We're gonna get in here now, we're gonna wash in some color. And this particular style in terms of how your pencil lines stay or don't, the pencil lines in this style are completely integrated. They stay forever and ever, amen. They are part of this style and I love it. I have a video coming up next week where I do a deep dive into this style, full length paint along. It's gonna be really fun. Okay, now I just roughed in some of the watercolor. Now I'm gonna go back and start to do some shading, right? Some shading. Um, typically very, very rough general approach to shading is where two elements meet, where they kind of tuck into one another, they are going to be darker. So where these petals kind of meet the center, I'm gonna do some shading. Now, let's talk about shading. Let's do a quick value scale. I've done a couple of these going to just start by lightly scratching back and forth in the shape of a rough rectangle. And then we're going to do it again, press a little bit harder, but a consistent pressure. And then we're going to keep, we're just going to keep doing, we're going to see how dark we can get with this first little scratchy area. This is a very general approach to how you can shade with a pencil. 
Keep those questions coming, friends. Keep those questions coming if you have them. All right. I'm going to move on. We're going to keep these rough rectangles connected, but we're going to do the next little rectangle. And we're going to just do it a shade lighter than the first one. And we have to figure out how many layers of this scratchy, even consistent pressure we need for it to be just a smidgy lighter. I think we could go even a little more, right? This is a very rough value scale. And then we keep going. We keep going. And this is a great way to think about how, I mean, of course, value and understanding dark to light and all of the options in between but also creating a value scale really helps you understand the technique of shading and the kind of pressure that you need to kind of get that soft and you can get even softer. Let's, let's bring out the Wretched 6B. You can do these kind of movements in a direction. A 6B is going to give you a gradient, a smoother finish than an HB, which is what I was just using. Look at that, you can do these in a direction, in a shape. Look at that, look at that. And then here's a petal, darker at the base, a little darker or a little heavier pressure right down here where I'm at, down here at the bottom. And then I lift my pressure gradually as I go back up towards the top to get that nice gradual change of value. Look at that. That's my 6B. So let's get back in and utilize some of those techniques we just talked about. We're going back into our pencil and wash and incorporating some shading. Do we have a question? I feel like Kelly just pinged me. Yeah, it's coming. <clears throat> Would you ever use a water soluble pencil sketch that would wash down the lines when water? Yes, ma'am. Oh, yes. I'm so glad you said that. Now, I have water soluble graphite somewhere in this hot mess of my studio, but I'm not about to go try to find it right now. So let me show you something really quick since she said it. Okay. Um, this, I sell these on ChristyRice.com. They're vintage pencils. These are what are called transfer pencils. Architects use them, um, you know, in years of yonder, in the words of, of who was that, Rachel on Friends? Yes. This is from the time period of yonder. I'm aging myself, but I love my friends. Um, so I, it just means I don't actually know when they're from. Um, so this acts a lot like a water-soluble graphite. And to be quite honest, it probably is um, the, the, the modern water soluble graphite pen pencils were probably modeled after transfer pencils. If I had to guess, I do not have any proof of that specifically, but that is my guess. And I'm gonna show you very soon what would happen. Th this particular pencil is one of my favorites. It goes on and looks like graphite. It looks like graphite, just remember. It, it kind of acts like a, I would say this is like a 3B pencil. I'm going to shade. I'm going to sculpt with it. I'm going to do some swirly, do scratchy boos here in the middle. All right. But the first time I discovered this pencil, I was in Rome. And I know I sound very bougie, but my husband, I used to be the most insane workaholic with my wedding business. And we had been wanting to go to Italy forever and ever, amen. And he kind of gave me an ultimatum. He's like, you either go to Italy and figure out how to like get your team to manage things for a little bit by themselves, or I'm gonna be very mad at you. And I did not want him to be very mad at me. So, um, cause I'm, I was the type of gal, like I'd go on vacation and work the entire time. I'd like be hiding in a closet. And so I wouldn't get caught. And like, I, you know, I was that kind of workaholic. And so, we went to Italy anyway. Wow. Long story short, we went to Italy and remember friends, we're still in the pencil and wash phase of, of this, this little portion of today's programming. No, I'm kidding. Um, and we were in Rome and I saw this little shop 
that looked just incredibly beautiful and precious. And it looked like a stationary shop. And I was like, oh, hold the phone. I'll see you in two days, honey. Bye bye. And so I went into the shop and I found, I mean, they just, you know, apothecary style, like built ins, you know, shelves full of just boxes of loveliness. Adam, could you actually, up there is the box of the, up there is the box of these that I'm talking about that's from the shop. I want to show them now. Um, <clears throat> so I found these boxes of pencils and I just, I, looking back now, I wish I had bought like all the things because everything that I picked up that day was a little awesome surprise to me and it was just lovely and wondrous. I picked up this box of pencils and didn't use them for such a long time. It was so dreamy. Oh my gosh. Um, it, it says Lovato on it, this gold. And um, it's probably, I thought I saw it in there last. It says Lovato. It's underneath. You see? No. The palette's there. Lift them up. Lift them up. Lift the red palette up and the blue palette up. Oh my God. What is happening? What is happening? <laughs> Your husband's asleep. Oh, yeah. Wow. Um, so this was the box that I discovered, Lorado. And I only have f like five of these left. It's so sad. But there's a gentleman in Turkey who still supplies me with them um, so that I can send them off to you. It's an HB, but it feels more like. Anyhow, saw this box and I bought it. And I will be honest, friends, I didn't use it for a few years later. And I was at the Greenbrier. Gosh, like I really sound bougie now. I just broke the tip. I was at the Greenbrier in West Virginia and I was sketching something architectural and we, it was at lunch in one of the cute little cafes that are on property. And I had one of these in my kit and I pulled it out and I'm like, oh, this is pretty. It'll be like an Instagrammable pencil for my shot. And I was doing pencil and wash. <coughs> and then I went to add watercolor to it. You ready for this? Get ready. I went, I'm going to zoom in. All right. I went to add watercolor to my sketch and really weird stuff started to happen. And I was like, come again. What now? I'm like, why is my, my graph? Now this is going to make this ugly because these are opposites and purple and yellow. And, but you get my point. Like I started adding water and pigment and I'm like, why are my lines turning purple? I was freaking out. So anyway, that is my long-winded story. I hope you didn't hate too much about um, water-soluble graphite and how it could function in this pencil and wash. So here it is again. I'm just going to do some scratchies. Looks exactly like graphite. And then you add water and hi, surprise. So, um, they are not made anymore. I have tried and they, they function differently than colored pen, uh, watercolor pencils because when you first sketch with them, they look like graphite, not a color. So I adore them. I, I just adore them. So anyway, if you have water soluble graphite, they're going to function a lot like this, but um, not be as strange looking because the colors will be better. But anyhow, yeah. So this is pencil and wash, and it is an integrated way to use pencil and leave pencil on the page along with watercolor, all right? Love that. Next up would be pencil map. Do a pencil map that's really light and get on with it. And this is the kind of the style that I, a lot of realistic, um, illustrators, watercolor painters specifically will use because this is going to give you um, the ability to erase parts of it early before you paint or very early in the first washes of paint. Um, so yes. Um, the harsh pencil lines drive me bananas. Those are really cool, Christy. Yes. Oh yeah. So am I. Okay, cool. All right. <clears throat> so I'm thinking peony. We see a lot of these peony tutorials, right? You know what I'm talking about. 
you know, you know the peony I'm talking about, right? Where it's just this really iconic kind of bowl cuppy shaped peony, right? And they'll do really light, light mapping of it all. And then we'll have that iconic leaf and just a few hints and maybe something's coming out down here, right? You all know what I'm talking about with this peony. We've seen it. There's nothing wrong. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. It's gorgeous, but it's kind of the quintessential <clears throat> um, peony line drawing that so many tutorials seem to start with for one reason or another, right? And at this point, they might stop. And we can soften the lines. We can just do a light, light eraser over. So erase early. And so we have just enough information from our mapping to start the painting. And so this is for the folks um, who really cannot handle heavy uh, the presence of heavy pencil lines in their pieces. Whether you don't like to see them along the way, or maybe it's just more so that you don't like to see them at the end. So this light mapping and then erasing early concept is really helpful. Because you still have those those helpful lines that kind of get your get you going so you know where you're going and you know where you're laying down color and you know where petals are meeting but you don't have those obtrusive to some pencil lines so who here like so far what are what are you do you like pencil and wash do you like erasing early with a light mapping what is your favorite do you like ink and wash we're going to talk about that that is coming up what, what is your favorite? Tell me, tell me, tell me. And then, not just uh, mapping makes it so much easier. Yes, the mapping absolutely 100% um, makes lighter work of these very tentative, sometimes scary first moments of of a painting right where you're just you're just so badly trying to or desperately trying to just get those first marks right so that you feel confident to start laying in shadows and all the things so the mapping allows you the the freedom to map in a race is needed when needed, right? And and feel confident in, in what you're laying down. See, I'm already mapping in some shadows because I have confidence in these initial strokes that I laid down because those initial strokes followed my, um, my self-approved pencil maps, right? I approved them. I looked at them. They, they felt right. They felt right enough. And I got, got going with the painting because those mapped outlines felt right. So that is another lovely, lovely way to use pencil in your illustration, in your sketching practices that really um, uh, helps you build confidence for sure. All right, how's everybody feeling? Good, good, good. Are you still with me? Are you still here? I see 170 of you are. I know, pencil sketching is much more meditative. It's, um, whereas what we did yesterday was very like, you know, out and loud and proud and all the things like 
the the it, much more high energy uh, pencil sketching is incredibly exciting and at times even more exciting than splashing around color and all the things but it's more inward it's 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 more like you're here right you're right your heart and your mind are, are working together and the rest of you is calmer somehow if that makes sense so it's a little bit more of a quiet practice and see your pencil lines aren't really showing anymore at all a little bit up here on top because you haven't i haven't really resolved that area at all but our peony is emerging lovely lovely all right so that is light mapping and erase early Um, Aaron asked, pencil and wash and ink and wash are the names of the technique. So pencil and wash was this first one. <clears throat> and that's just something I kind of call it because it's a spin on um, ink and wash, line and wash. And then, yeah, line and wash is using um, pen instead of pencil. So, um, so this one is a light map. So you're mapping out your shapes lightly and then erase early. Yeah. All right, friends, ink and wash, super fun. Um, you just get in there and you start. Now I feel like, I don't know how y'all feel. And I know this isn't, this isn't pencil, this is ink, but it's still sketching. Ink and wash can be done in a couple of different ways. You can just start with um, sketching right in with your pen, right? You can start right in. You could also map out with pencil first if you felt like it, and then go over top with your ink if you wanted that a little extra kind of comfort. All right. <clears throat> and then you literally go in and start watercoloring over top. Ink and wash. Yeah. So let's see here. It's usually a lighter approach. You're not necessarily coloring in. You might go outside the lines a little bit. It's more stylized, but it's definitely not as cartoony as our first um, sketching of the critters earlier today. Isn't that beautiful? Just simple, lovely. Berry action. Um, what pens do you recommend that don't bleed? I love these um, Faber-Castell uh, pit pens. Absolute favorite, 100%. Um, it's not that they won't bleed, but you really have to work hard to make them bleed. And you can go right, I mean, you saw I went right into this inky area that I had just laid down and, and put watercolor over it. Do you always start with pen before watercolor? Oh, no. Mm-mm. Now, um, for me, starting with pen is when I'm in the mood for a very specific style. Um, I do have a video I mentioned. I often do start with pencil. Um, I have a video that I'm going to link below in, in a few. It's um, stress-free sketching, and I show you how to map out with pencil, then go over it with pen, and then watercolor it. Um, and I will I will link to that so you can see it. it's a great great technique um, to try out. But no, I typically sketch first or just go straight in with brush and paint. That is how I do things. But if I'm in the mood for a bolder look, a more stylized look, I will definitely start with the pen. Ink and wash. Isn't she? 
Isn't she lovely? I've been shopping for a glass pen. Does anybody have recommendations? I'll let y'all go ahead with that. I haven't used one. Maybe above it, because I know with pens, you're gonna get really, really cool um, line quality. And while we're at it, let's talk about line quality. It's really important. Important in the sense that you can get such interesting character uh, if you pay attention to line quality. So we're gonna talk about that in a minute. And I'm going to continue on this illustration here as an example. I have another pit pen here. This is a brush tip. Um, mm -mm -mm. See, has a brush tip B on the end. Line quality is thick and thin lines and getting thick and thin lines all in one stroke, right? I really love playing around with line quality and let me show you what that can, that, that can look like. changing the pressure or even the pen in your hand to get some lines that are thin and lines that go from thick to thin all in one movement. You can even do it with this more felt kind of rigid tip pit pen. And then of course with a brush pen you can do it very easily because a brush pen is much more flexible and responsive to a change in uh, pressure. <clears throat> Line quality can turn a ho-hum illustration into something absolutely lyrical. So there you have it. Now let's, I haven't used this one in a couple of weeks. I'm trying to remember how it responds to water. Look at that. Maybe a skosh of bleeding there. Maybe, but I don't think so. That's why I love me my pit pans. They do a good job. They let you be very instinctive. They let you, you know, there's no dry time. There's not, you know, you can just get in there and enjoy the immediacy of your session and not have to worry about bleeding. Kelly, if you put up a question, I think I missed it. Could you put that up again? Now, friends, you can also sketch, like I mentioned, you can play around with line quality with a brush. Okay. Um, let's, let's see what this feels like. All right. I've got my eighth inch dagger. Oh, this is fun, friends. So you're drawing with your brush. Uh, question, Christy, how do you decide which part of the line should be thick? Uh, a great quick hack for that, friends, is um, which edge of the petal for this example is darker, has a shadow. Um, and if that edge of the petal has a shadow, I would make the line thicker, 100%. That's an easy, easy hack. This is fun. I'm holding this brush perpendicular. It, that gives me a lot of control. Um, you figure out how you'd want to hold a brush that you were going to try sketching with. So sketching isn't just for pencils anymore. Sketching isn't just, yes, I did just smack my husband because I want him to put that up on the screen and he's playing word games on his phone. <laughs> no, -uh. goofball. So anyhow, so yeah, where there's a shadow, um, you'd have to type it up. Sketching isn't just for pencils anymore. Oh my gosh, he's slacking y'all. He is slacking. So I would love, who's gonna try sketching with a brush? 
after this today? Who's going to try it? Because can I just please encourage you to try this magical, fun little way of sketching? Because it is the bomb. It's so fluid and free. It's lovely. Who's going to give it a try? Ooh, just adding some linear detail. We talked about linear, linear detail on day one, one of our techniques. Super fun. And then letting that paint run out gives us a dry brush moment. Mm, so good. Sketching is your afternoon plan, Pat. Love it. Adam, we need you, LOL. <laughs> oh my gosh, Adam, your questions are hysterical. All right, friends, we're going to do another giveaway here because Adam's been working hard on the impossible questions to win. Oh my Lord. All right, get ready for it. Felicity's going to try everything. Felicity's going to try everything. Um, Michael is sketching with a brush right now. Woohoo! All right, so guess what? You're going to win a bag, and it's going to have a palette and a brush in it, and it's a five-month calendar. These days will be your offering. And so the question is, my friends, the pencils I talked about. The pencils I talked about. Where did I discover the pencils? The first one to type it in wins a bag. Where did I discover the pencils? Where did I buy the pencils? Where? No, I'm going to do three giveaways. <laughs> Where did I buy the pencils, my dear friends? All right. We've got the answer coming in correctly. I think it was... Who got it right first? Oh, um, somebody did say, but I wasn't clear. So I'm going to have to go with Italy. Did Tammy say Italy first? I think so. Can you double check? Okay, double check it. The answer is Italy, um, more specifically Rome. Um, do give, give one away to the first person who said Italy and the first person who said Rome. Okay, Tammy. Anka. Anka. Said Rome. All right, both of y'all need to email me hello at christyrice.com. Attention, Kristen, and give us your mailing address if you're international. We need that phone number. Awesome. Awesome, awesome sauce. All right, y'all, the last one, and I don't have to demo this one, is sketch it and forget it. Sketch it and forget it. And then we're going to move on to the paint along. And remember, this is the sketch it and forget it. This is where you just sketch and you start with basic shapes and you refine and you start to darken your lines if you feel so compelled. And then you just start painting. And as you evolve your painting with more detail and more glazing and more layering, your pencil lines will disappear. This is my favorite by far. All right. All right, we're going to get into today's paint along. We have about 15 minutes. Let's do this. So story time as I prepare. If you're painting along with me, you're going to want a bigger sheet of paper. Um, I got to get this to fit on the screen because it's vertical. Oh, good heavens. You're going to see parts of my desk that there's my vitamins. Oh, good heavens. We're going to adjust this. Stick with me. And for my friends on the replay, just remember how glad I am that you're here. I am truly grateful. All right. Truly grateful. Okay. So I started a rough sketch of this, this little dude. Um, can you get him up on your right screen for me in Photoshop? I need to see him again. So I have a story. <clears throat> I have a story. Thank you. Uh, we have a blue heron, right? It's a blue heron. 
that visits our property every year. I like to imagine and dream in, a, in an ideal world that it's the same blue heron every year, but who knows truly. And we have lovingly called him Sneaky Pete. Yes. And so today I know someone had asked for birds and they are not the first person ever to ask for birds on this channel. And so I was like, you know what? I am going to sketch Sneaky Pete. Let's get that inspiration photo up on the screen for folks. And friends, I will be linking uh, this below after this. Um, hi, that's not me. I'm not the inspiration photo. That's, it's fine. <clears throat> so uh, we are going to sketch and paint a little bit of a, a blue heron today. And uh, this is kind of what our sneaky Pete looks like. He visits our pond and we see him in the sky and every time we see him, it's just a magical, magical little moment. Um, and you know, I love painting. I do love painting birds. I have a whole pattern that I painted. Um, this paper size is, um, hold the phone, is it 10 by 13? It is 10 by 14. And this is Stonehenge, Stonehenge. Painted a pattern ages ago. It was inspired by flora, fauna uh, of, of my backyard, basically. And Sneaky Pete made an appearance. And so I just, I do adore painting birds. So I did rough in the basics here, friends, and let's get on it. So we're talking a teardrop here, big teardrop, okay? Can you put the full screen for, on me? Painting camera. Painting camera. Thanks. Big teardrop. All right. I'm going to get in here. I'm going to go darker. Big teardrop. And then a smaller teardrop that kind of bumps up at the top here over the first teardrop. Because the, the Sneaky Pete here has kind of a hump, humpback, hunchback, hunchback, right? Humpback? No, whatever. An oval. A circle. I'm breaking her down for you. Another oval kind of connects. Looks like an L made out of two ovals. And then another oval underneath, right? How are we feeling? Yay. I am using my HB. We call them shags in Australia. I love it. I love it. There's a movie called Shag. And it's like a movie that doesn't exist anymore. It was like Bridget Fonda and all these wonderful actresses and um, Phoebe Cates. And it was about a dance called The Shag. I used to watch it over and over in summertime when I was a kid. Anyway, I digress. There's been a blue heron visiting our tank that is full of goldfish. Ah, is, is the heron stealing the fish, I wonder? Hmm. All right, on repeat, big, big. Some people are asking about proportions and, and proportions are key. And that can be the frustrating part because you could be getting into a sketch and all of a sudden realize, oh gosh, the head is too big. This is the wrong angle. So another thing that you can do is start with a guiding line. So my guiding line for the general direction of this, of Pete's body would be something like this, watch. It's a curve. That would be my general guiding line. And then there'd be another one up here and here and then here. Right? Okay. Another circle up here. And then you guessed it, a triangle. And I'm at the stage now where I could start refining. Now, the one thing I am noticing is the space between the hump, the hump here and the back of his neck. Something is off compared to the photo. Compared to the photo, something is off. I didn't go back far enough with this oval. All right, so I'm going to adjust that and I'm going to adjust that because there's not a lot of space here between his hump and the back of his neck. 
And you're probably wondering, holy crow, Christy, what are you gonna do with all of these extra pencil lines? <laughs> Designs and do-overs says, why did I pay for art school? I could have just gone to Christy Rice class. Oh my gosh, I love you. That is very kind. So don't worry about all these extra pencil lines. Let's get into refining. This is the fun part. At this point, you're checking space. You're checking relationships. This is a good distance. This makes sense. Could you, is there a way to pop up the inspiration photo next to me sketching? Could, can you figure that out? Or is that what we were having a problem with? I could do that for you. Let me see. Hold on, friends. Eek. What about the one next to it? Oh no, that's just, what's that? Okay, now wait, take me, take my face out of the cam. Go down to Christy cam, click on that. No, uh, okay. Anywho, <clears throat> I was trying to get, um, you know what I was trying to do, I guarantee. Okay, we'll deal with it. Okay, so look, I want you to look at, let's leave him up there for a minute. I want you to look at the, the space between the back of his neck and the top of that hump. It's tiny. And I want you to look at the point of his beak. And I want you to draw in your mind an imaginary line or draw it on your page if you can't imagine the line. I want you to draw a straight, like an angled line that goes from the tip of his beak down. Does it hit his belly? It should. It should hit his belly. It should hit his belly and it should also hit the bottom of his tail. And guess what? It's not hitting the base of my tail. Go back to full screen painting cam. Thank you. So this should go down here and it should hit the bot. It should hit his belly and it should hit the base of his tail. And I wasn't, mine wasn't. So I'm adjusting. I'm adjusting and that feels better. Right? That feels better. And then where are these feet coming into play? Where are these feet? The foot here, if you notice in the inspiration photo, is just a smidge to the right of the tip of his, the base of his tail. Go back to sketching. And then his other leg here is coming out. And then his feet are level. His actual feet seem to be level with one another. All right. But we're not going to worry about that too much. Okay. Now's the fun part. Now we're going to go in. I, I am most attracted. Here's something I want you to hear. I am most attracted to the curves and the beauty of his neck and his head. And so I'm excited about that. That's where I'm going to go right now and start refining. If you don't feel comfortable refining with such dark lines at this point, then by all means, do not. I'm not sure if I'm comfortable. And I'm constantly looking back, constantly looking back. And that eye seems to line up really interestingly with this beak and this face isn't nearly long enough. I may just decide to shorten it because I can. And surprisingly under his chin, it's kind of straight. I had it curved originally. A little, little bit of a racy, racy boo here. I had it kind of curved, but it's really not. And then we dip down and I'm constantly looking. Okay, now we've got this weird jugular bump here. I don't, I, I, I'm sure there's a name for this. I don't know what it is. It's like a, it's like a knuckle. It's like a knuckle. Like a pipe? What are you doing? What is this hand bend you're doing? Yeah, I know, but I'm just, I'm saying, I'm sure there's this, a really interesting name for it. My husband's trying to critique me. Iron sharpens iron, as he says. <laughs> All right. And I am just, friends, I'm constantly looking, constantly looking. This is a complicated area. 
this is an area of potential frustration. It's going to make you feel like you're just not getting it, but you will get it. You will get it. Friends, if you're noticing something that I'm missing with relationship proportion, tell me. Let's critique each other. I think that is so, I'm loving hearing you talk through this process. I'm glad. Design and do over. I'm so impressed and inspired and I've watched a few videos now, but I want to go out and purchase some watercolors now, but I think I can. Uh -huh. The gullet. Jennifer says it's the gullet. Okay. Awesome. All right. Just remember, friends, you can always, if you've got a light enough touch, you can always erase. You can, like, I can start erasing this crazy town, holy hot mess of all these lines. And don't think because I'm saying mess, it means it's incorrect. These are all my guiding lines. These are my direction. These are my, and honestly, I think his head is too big. But I don't care because I think it's fun. And I think actually maybe not too big. I'm looking back. I'm looking at my piece. I'm looking at the screen. I'm looking at my piece. I'm again looking. How thick is his neck? How thick is his neck when it reaches his body? And I think I've got it pretty accurate. You think about comparing. Think about comparing shapes and comparing widths. Let me talk you through this. Where his neck meets his body. Let's look at that thickness. How does that compare to say the back end of this group of feathers compared to the photo? Pretty close. I do notice, however, that I need to kind of come up even higher here on the back end of it and cut in. I noticed that and I just, I noticed that by looking and by comparing and looking some more and comparing. Now, some of you might find that constant comparing and looking and eyes shooting back and forth to just be entirely too much and overwhelming and definitely not in your joy zone. And by all means, friends, be okay with that. Be okay with the discovery that something isn't for you. Be okay with it. All right. I think I got a little out of control with the hump here. I'm going to draw an angled line from the side of his head here. And I'm going to come back down. And yes, I did indeed get out of control with that hump. So I'm going to adjust. All right. This is how, this is how we do it. Yeah. See, I'm singing. I'm singing. That means I'm happy. I'm happy. All right. <clears throat> Um, oh, thank you, Designs and Do-Overs. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. Yes, I do sell watercolor pans. Um, Adam, if you want to put that there, chatting about my watercolor palette, if you want to put that up, yeah. <laughs> Laura says, it, uh, if the listeners today don't have Christy's palette, they are missing out. You are so sweet. Uh, Misty says she's excited about my heron. Um, I'm excited and just really pray that I can pull her off. It's been a couple years since I painted me a heron or sketched a heron. I'm still not convinced of the legs, but we're working on it. I think this is actually a little thick. I think this neck, what do you think, honey? I think that neck's a little thick there. I think that's what, what's making his head. The body's too thick, really. Like over here, maybe. Mm. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay. He said my bird is bloated. <laughs> my bird is bloated. Oh my gosh. It's too funny. All right. So friends, though, so here's the thing. At this point, I'm feeling good enough, except for the leg. I'm not feeling good enough yet. Hold on. Hold on. I just have the sneaking suspicion that I'm about to realize that I am out of paper and I'm going to have to resolve that. Um, that his legs. So let's look at this, honey, can you bring up the photo? Here's another comparison that you can do with your fingers or with your pencil, measure the distance of the legs. I'm going to do it with you right now. 
compared to something that will give you some idea. The distance of that front leg from top to bottom is the same distance. Ow. Oh. The distance of his leg from top to bottom is the same distance of from the front, the top of the front leg to the bottom of the feathers. Aha, go back to sketching. All right, that might help. So it's also about measuring distances, friends. He's at the wrong angle though. Um, it's also about measuring distances. So you can use your pencil. Let me show you how I do this. You can use your pencil as a measurement device. You can hold it out, hold it next to something, put your finger, let's see, I can measure the distance. I can put the pencil at the top of the neck here and then realize that's the thickness of my neck right here, from here to here. How does that compare to the distance of the leg? It's about double, it's about double. So I know I need my leg to be about this long yeah, I just can't quite get the angle that has been plaguing me. Even when I was roughing it out earlier today, it was plaguing me and, and annoying me. But anyway, we're not going to worry about it at this point because um, we don't have to. I want to start painting. All right, let's get into it. Spray down your palettes, friends. I am using the Art for Joy Steak palette, but I think legs aside... Legs aside, and to be quite honest, I could just turn this into, if if I'm happy, and I am, with the rest of this beautiful beast body, I could just turn this into a log and call her a day. <laughs> this is how I roll, y'all. Now, I'm not going to go realistic on color. I'm just not going wet on dry. I'm going to blue up our blue heron even more. I'm mixing some blue and some orange that was already on the palette down here to make a dinginess that I think will be fun. I am using my three quarter inch um, dagger. I'm going up in here in this area because I love it so much. I love the gullet. This area of the neck is so pretty to me. So I'm gonna do some focusing on that little bit of pink. I, I feel like I see splashes of pink in these areas and it's just so lovely. Um, and of course I'm exaggerating. Is there fuchsia in this, in this lovely beast? No, but I don't care. Okay, fine. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go over here with some definition and some directional marks. Now we're getting into the wet on wetness of of things because my page is a little wet and then i'm going to use this buff color for the hump and this top layer of feathers and this is just the beginning layers friends just the beginning layers and this isn't a painting lesson this was a sketching lesson and what i do hope for you today um i hope this was helpful like i said I am not the most talented illustrator in the world, uh, but I get along and I have some confidence with it and I have a style and I hope that those factors, albeit imperfect, were helpful for you today. Were they helpful? Um, what would be more helpful in the future? What would you like to see from me in the future when it comes to drawing? Let's head into comments and chit chat about that. I would love to hear your thoughts as I continue on this little dude here. I would love to hear your thoughts. <laughs> what would be helpful in the future? What would be helpful as a continuation of some things that we've been talking about today? Pat says she learned so much today. Um, Gina loves painting birds from imagination, we do better with photos. Oh, yeah. Add a bit of pink to the wing. Yes, ma'am. Yes. I want to add it down here. And it's going to turn purplish because um, it's wet with the blue underneath.
Mm. Okay. Okay. Oh, I love you, Mr. Heron. You make me happy. You are not realistic. I'm putting fluorescent yellow on you. And I don't care. And I'm singing a song like my son. My son likes to make up songs as he goes. And it is one of my favorite things. And this is turning into a pencil and wash, friends, from BT Dubs, because it just felt right in the moment. What does his eye look like? What's going on with this bad boy's eye? I'm trying to figure that out. I am trying to figure that out. All right, we're gonna... Adam. Fresh eyes, husband. What am I doing wrong with this bird's legs? Tell me. Small leg is split back out. The small leg? They're not going to work the same way. They're, they're split. Yeah, I know. They're split, but I don't understand why. Yeah, I have a request. What's my request? Oh, my gosh. Did you request that? No. You, you did request no, did that. Not. I'm painting and I'm painting because I love painting and I hate you, husband, for making me sing this time. Singing this painting song. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> You're a jerk. You I, can't, I know I didn't, but I couldn't resist. And I hate this beast legs so much. But I'll keep trying. <laughs> I give up. I'm done. I don't care about the legs anymore. I'm going to care about them when I um, work on this painting more and then post it in the community section. <laughs> but but the um, everything else about him is pretty cool, right? Um, what is the eraser that you are using? It's a Stedler eraser. It's my favorite. It comes in a little plastic case. And it's awesome and it clicks up and down and it's in my Amazon shop if you're interested. Um, do we love the Heron, friends? Are we happy with the Heron? Let me know in comments how you feel about my crazy Heron. I think he's pretty cool. I think he's pretty cool. Honey, do you like my Heron? I think he's awesome. Thanks. He knows he has to say that or he might get smacked. I'm kidding. I don't know what this dark part on him is. Anyway, friends, let's just review, recap as we wrap up. I want you to think about the tools that you're using. What inspires you? I'm giving you homework. Please sketch with a ballpoint at some point in the next 48 hours. Enjoy it. Feel it. Get into it. Love it. It is really fun. Um, you would love to see regular live sessions. I know. I need to work on that. Um, can we see the photo again? Uh, show the photo of Sneaky Pete, please. EMG says, I love how you inject all kinds of colors that aren't in the photo, but they work beautifully. Can we see the photo again? Yes, thank you. I do love to inject color. That is for sure. Um, thank you, HV Made, for helping in the comment section. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. Mary loves the heron. Thank you. Both Mary. We have two Marys loving the heron. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Sandra. So um, think about the tools. Get yourself a mechanical pencil. Try a 2B. Try a pit pen. Get in there. Think about your line quality, friends. Go back to the painting. Um, think about your line quality. And while you're at it, I, I, I hate to just continue to encourage you to purchase things. But, you know, if you're looking to expand, pick up this book. This book is fantastic. Friends, before we go, I have an, a question. Would you like to see something top secret? Would you? If not, it's okay. If not, I'm, I won't be offended. But would you like to see something top secret? Think about your line quality. Think about your line quality, all right? I want you to think about the thick and the thin of how you are putting marks on page. Laura wants to see top secret, top secret. Yes, EMG loves secrets. Think about your line quality. Okay, top secret friends, something I've been working on. I'm so excited. Uh, I'm gonna show you a little something. This is a clue. And this is a clue. 
and this is what it looks like inside. Anybody have any ideas? Anybody, anybody, anybody? Anybody? I'm so glad, Inger, that you're having fun. The bag, right? So fun. Chasing joy. Chasing joy. All right, friends. And here's another option. I haven't decided on the bag. Here's another option. And if y'all are watching this later, a couple months down the road, I hope these are available by then and you'll have to tell me what you think. Are you ready? More colors. I love seeing you step outside of the comfort zones into something that isn't the normal. Love that. Yeah. All right, friends. These are my watercolor markers that I've been working on for what feels like it, it's been over a year. It's been a long time. They're called the Wonder Color Brush Pen. And it's a set of 20. And the colors are have been agonized over custom colors. And here they are. This could change still, but this is where we're kind of landing. And just a quick look, it is a brush tip that feels like a brush and functions like a brush, but it's also like a Le Pen. Anybody know the Le Pen's little tiny fine point? It is a watercolor Le Pen on the other side that also functions like watercolor. And I could not be more thrilled. Um, super excited. Still deciding on which pattern. Let me know which is your favorite. The, the pattern, the rainbow pattern or the cactus strawberries. And uh, yeah, that's your little look at my, my super top secret thing going on. Anyway, friends, I am just getting real sad that this is almost over, that our our live week, our watercolor land is almost over. But at the same time, I am so inspired, incredibly inspired by what we have been doing here, by what we have been doing here. I love this community. You are such a gift to me. The cactus, the rainbow, keep it coming. I would love to know your favorite. Keep it coming. Cactus strawberries for sure. Um, so boop, boop. If you haven't already friends, would you give this video a boop friends? That is a like, it doesn't cost you a thing, but a half second of time right underneath the video stream. And also if you don't want to miss a thing in the future from me, you can hit that little bell icon after you've su subscribed and you will be notified every time I'm live or anytime I upload a video, screens, please. uh, friends. Uh, the next thing that you need to take a look at, that if you haven't already watched my video on sketching and then inking and then watercoloring flowers, that is what you need to watch next. And it's going to pop up here soon. Uh, and friends, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I will see you soon. Tomorrow is mixed media day. Get ready. Have all the things ready. Like just have a bunch of things ready because who knows what we're going to get into tomorrow. If you're watching on the replay a few months down the road, uh, look below. I have linked this entire series for you so you can watch along with us and play along with us. And until next time, what am I going to say? What am I going to say? Happy sketching. Take care, y'all.